Good morning. Welcome to Livingston United Methodist Church. We are glad that you have chosen to come and, and join us here on this worship service as Facebook Live and, and YouTube Live this morning. What a privilege it is to join you in your homes. And Deborah, thank you for being here as you are playing Stand by me, I think is the name of that that great old hymn. I was just singing to myself. I didn't do it very loud because I have a microphone on and I was afraid that you would hear me, but but I was singing those songs, those words as a prayer. Well again, we want to welcome you to Livingston United Methodist Church. I'm Steve Spinning, the pastor here. Now let me just give you just a couple of announcements. One is if this was a normal Palm Sunday, tomorrow at noon we would be gathered right here in the sanctuary for a Holy Week service. Well, we can't do that this year, but we are going to have Holy Week devotions every day here at noon from the sanctuary. We hope that you will join us either at noon on Facebook and YouTube Live or, or you can join us by listening to the messages and listening to the devotions at a later time during the day. Now secondly, as you many of you know, that today we're going to be celebrating Holy Communion together. Many of you have have gone, come by and have picked up one of these from the, from the house or from outside in the church um, to the, this week. And we want you to have these available um, as we move into communion a little bit later in this service. If you don't have um, did not get any of these. If you are joining us and were not able to pick these up, that's okay. If you go to your kitchen and you get some bread, any bread will do. Um, if you don't have grape juice, a cup of water will do. After all, in John chapter 2, Jesus turned water into wine, and so I believe he can turn water miraculously into grape juice for us today. So I'm going to give you just a moment to make sure that you are ready as we move in to a time of preparing for a communion. <laughs> Again, thank you for joining us this morning. And what a privilege it is. Now, 
I'm going to be the first to admit it. This is the first time I have ever celebrated online communion. But I'm excited this morning, and I hope you are as well. But let me ask you a question. I want you to think back to, to your Bible. And I, I want to just ask you this. If you could meet anybody in the Bible other than Jesus Christ, but anybody from the Old Testament or, or the New Testament, and if you could have a cup of coffee with them and ask them um, any questions that you would like to ask them, who would it be? Now, you may be choosing, you may not like coffee, you may prefer having a glass of sweet tea with them, but if you could sit down with anybody from the days of the Scripture, Old Testament, New Testament, who would you choose? Would it be Noah? Would you ask him, what, what was it like to, to be on the ark for that long with, with all those animals and what did it smell like? Or maybe it would be David. And you would ask him, what, what was it like to stare down Goliath with just a sling and five smooth stones? Maybe you would choose Mary, the mother of Jesus. And you would ask her, well, what was it like to give birth and to raise the Son of God himself, and then, then to watch him hang from a cross. What, what was that like? Well, Max Lucado, I, I think that's how you pronounce his name. Maybe it's Lucado, Lucado, Potato, Potato. I don't really know. I never can remember. But in one of his books, Max Lucado said if he could meet anybody from Scripture, he would choose to meet the guy with the donkey. Oh, you know what? The guy that I'm talking about. The, the guy that, that gave his donkey to Jesus. The, the story that was written about in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and, and John. I'm going to choose to read from Luke's gospel. I changed early this morning. I was going to read from Matthew's gospel, but when I was reading in my quiet time this morning, I, I chose, I'm going to change, and I'm going to read from Luke's gospel. From Luke chapter 19, beginning with verse 28, we read these words. Now, after Jesus had said this, he, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. And as he approached Bethphage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever written. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it, say, the Lord needs it. So those who went were sent ahead, went and found it just as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, the owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? And they replied, the Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt, and put Jesus on it, and as he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. And when he came near the place where the road goes down to the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples became, began joyfully to praise him in loud voices for all the miracles that they had seen. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Now some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, If they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. Now as he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it 
And he said, if you, even you, had not only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. The days will come when, when your in a, the days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground. You and the children within your walls, they, they will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of the Lord's coming to you. My friends, this is the word of God. Now if you could, could sit down and have that cup of coffee with the guy with the donkey, what would you ask him? Now, I would probably ask questions like, well, did you and Jesus work out in advance that um, some, some code words so that you would know when he would need your, your donkey? Or did you know that um, that God was going to use that day, going to use your donkey as a fulfillment of, of Old Testament prophecy? Or did you realize that, that the story of your donkey would be told in all four Gospels, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and, and Nearly 2,000 years of Christian history, every week, every year, the Sunday before Easter, that people would read the story all across the world of how God used your donkey. You know, I don't know the answers to all of that, but... All I know is that the guy with the donkey had a donkey and he gave it to Jesus. I don't understand all the theological implications and all that, but he gave it to Jesus. Now, for those of you that have ever studied Scripture or know a little bit about those ancient times back then, when a king would come into a city, a conquering king would ride a, ride a horse, a war horse, a, a stallion, if you will, because that was a symbol of power. But a donkey, a donkey was a symbol of peace. You know, I wonder if the times 2,000 years ago were really that different than they, than they are today. You see, back then, the people there that first Palm Sunday, they, they were wanting a king to come and deliver them. You see, the deliverance that they craved was, was deliverance from the Roman Empire. Um, don't, I, don't mistake that. That, that was not a, a pleasant time to be a Jew back in the, those days. And being under Roman rule was difficult. It was hard. And the best thing that they could imagine was that if God would send a king to come into the city on a white horse, on a stallion, and overthrow and deliver them from their enemy, that there would be nothing better. And so, in Scripture, on that Palm Sunday that, you know, as we celebrate and we remember it today, you know, it, something dawned on me this morning as I was reading through all four gospel accounts. I, I would recommend that you do that sometime today. Is to go to BibleGateway.com or just turn in your Bible and find it. And, 
in Matthew's account, in Mark's account, in Luke's account, in John's account, and read over each one. But, you know, I normally think on Palm Sundays of them taking palm branches and waving their palm branches. And they did. But they also did something else. The Bible says that the disciples took their cloaks and they laid their cloaks on the donkey so Jesus would have something to sit on. And then the Bible says that the crowds, that they took the cloaks off of their backs and they laid them on the road to be trampled by four feet of a donkey, another four feet of the donkey's foal, and thousands of human feet that were trampled over that cloak that they laid on the road to welcome the King of Kings. You see, the thing that they thought was they were doing was welcoming a coming conqueror who would deliver them from their enemies. But Jesus had something different in mind. Jesus came not on a horse, on a war horse, proclaiming his power. He came on a donkey proclaiming peace. The reason why I chose Luke's gospel was because at the very end of what I read to you, it says this. As he approached Jerusalem and he saw the city, he wept over it and he said, if you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. See, the people thought peace would come when they would be delivered from their enemies, from the Romans back then, today. What might it mean? Is peace going to come when we are delivered from something else and we can go back to life as usual? Or could Jesus be telling us today, as he told the people nearly 2,000 years ago, that I have something even better in store. You see, the people thought that the greatest gift would be the deliverance from the Roman Empire, but Jesus wanted to give them the greatest gift, the gift of his love the sacrifice of himself. You know, and that, that is why we celebrate communion. That is why we ask you to join us live today to welcome the Prince of Peace to lay your clothes and welcome the King of Kings, the Prince of Peace, who wants to give you the greatest gift, the gift that later that week, the gift that Jesus himself would be gathered in, in the upper room with his 12 disciples, with Peter and Andrew and Bartholomew, and yes, and, and Judas as well. 
and badness in you and me. And it was there at the Last Supper that in the middle of the Last Supper, in the middle of the Passover meal, that Jesus took bread and he broke it. And he said, take and eat, for this is my body, which is broken for you. And the same way, after the supper, Jesus took the cup and he blessed it. And he gave thanks over it. And he said, take this and drink it. For this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Take this all of you and drink it. For this is my blood that is shed for you. Now to properly prepare us for communion, we need to prepare our hearts and our minds. And so right now, right where you are, I want you to bow your heads with me. And as Deborah plays, I'm going to lead you through a prayer. And at the end, I want to invite you to join with me in the Lord's Prayer. As I lead you, I want you to respond to the questions that I ask you. Respond to them silently. Father God, we thank you that 2,000 years ago you didn't give us what we thought we needed the most. That you gave us what we actually did need. Lord, we thought that we needed deliverance more than anything else. But you sacrificed your son. And you gave us the greatest gift. So pray silently in response to these questions. How have you taken that gift for granted?
talk with God about it. And now, out loud, right where you are, will you pray with me? Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Now, I want to invite you to take your cups and take your cups or your bread and your juice. At the top of the cup, there is a wafer. And I invite you to take that. Be careful as you pull it off. But there is, I should have got this ready in advance, like I warned you to do. But take your time. The wafer is there on the top, and you can pull it out. And I want to invite you to hold it up. This is the body of Christ broken. Thank you, Lord, for the greatest sacrifice. Thank you for Jesus. And Lord, this week, as we enter into Holy Week, help us to see Jesus in the precious Oh, so glorious name of the King of Kings. All God's people said, Amen. Well, I don't have questions for you today, but I have a challenge. Nearly 2,000 years ago, some Wave palm branches. Most years at Palm Sunday, we'll 
rely on a florist to bring palm branches in here. We pass them out at the door and we wave them. And when I was a boy, I had sword fights with my brother. But what if today, what if you took your clothes and if you laid them out on the front step of your homes as an act of welcoming Jesus into Holy Week into your homes. I did it this morning. If you drive by the parsonage, you will see it. Will you do it to welcome Amen. I will see you each day this week. Welcome him into your hearts. Amen.